Hey, it's Joel. Fidget spinners! You remember these things. I showed you how to make these long, long ago using Fusion 360 in your own 3D printer. No doubt you made some of your own, maybe, and you used a lot of these. Those are 608ZZ bearings, uh, commonly referred to as skateboard bearings. The demand for fidget spinners diminished, but I have a bunch of these bearings left over. What do you say we make something new that uses them? And I found Trust the Model to do this with. Let me show you right here on 3D Printing Nerd. This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Ready to start your new business? Make it. Get started with Squarespace. I saw this model on Thingiverse by user Additive Tech. It was this helical structure that was then mirrored and in the shape of like a cup and it could spin around and it could hold things. So I printed it. The base was printed in filamentum PLA. Look at that. That is a spectacular base. So along with the base, you need two helical cups, one a mirror of the other. I decided to print the first cup using Strong Hero 3D and I did it on my CME CNC Artemis. And that's where the bearing goes, right in the bottom. So you put it on the base and it spins. Now we need a mirror image of this. This is in filamentum PLA and I like it. Put a bearing in the bottom and because it's a mirror image, they link up just like that. It should spin, it should spin great. Wait a minute, it's a cup. Let's put stuff inside. Pens or pencils or a screwdriver and a pen. There we go, we've got stuff inside and they spin around. It's almost a, a spinning fidget toy in itself. It's using bearings and it's spinning around and it's fun to look at. This is awesome, this is a great use, this is a great desk thing and no doubt if you showed this to any of your friends or family, they might want one of their own for their desk. But there was something interesting because someone had made a remix. A user by the name of T Butters actually kept the cups, the helical cups together, but they looked at the base. Good thing they did because I just broke mine. <laughs> there's, my, there's my bearing right there. So they looked at the base and they said, you don't need this. What you need to do is get a base and you need to make it modular. So what they did is they took the standard base that looks a lot like this, right? See, just like that. But then they added a puzzle piece sort of structure to it. It's science. So now, instead of just having two, I can put this puzzle piece in the middle, and now I can fit three. This happens to be the Matter Hackers Nylon G filament, and it's wonderful. Turned out great, nice and strong for this sort of thing. Well, if we're gonna go three, we might as well go four, right? I printed one more puzzle piece. Let's get that inserted. Okay, got four right there, that should be good. Well, if we're doing four, I mean, we might as well add a little bit more, right? I printed some puzzle pieces in the Poly Alchemy FX series, Poly Alchemy FX. These three puzzle pieces were printed in filamentum PLA filament and they look great. So now these are Color Fab PLA. I've had it on the spool for years and I just decided to give it a try and it printed on the Prusa i3 Mark III just wonderfully. Okay, now we've got something. So let's get these all together and see if something like this works. Back silver. And then let's do this. Okay, holy cow, look at this. <laughs> We've got 13, 13 of these. This is crazy. So if we take this one and put it right in the middle, we take this one next to it, we put the bearing back inside and then we put it in the middle. Okay, those spin. Let's see if we can add some more. First, we'll do this one. This is printed in Color Fab PLA on the Prusa Mark III, and it looks great. Uh, we do need to put a bearing in it. It has to go on the right spot. So, okay, because remember, they're mirror images, and so they have to go <laughs> regular mirror, regular mirror. And then, okay, that's good. So what's next? Maybe, ah, that one will work. This is, Matter Hackers Build Series PLA. It's very pink. I printed this on my Simi CNC Artemis. It's a little stringy because I didn't get the settings quite right, but I think structurally it's great and I still think it looks good and I still think it's very pink. Okay, that's in. 
Uh, okay, let's keep going. This is Polyalchemy FX, and this is a beautiful model. This is printed on the Prusa i3 Mark III 3D printer, and it did a fantastic job. Tiny, tiny bit stringy, but that's okay. Again, that's a settings thing. This is Repcord Purple Haze. These are old spools that Pooch himself gave me that were for the rep box, and I took it out. I put it on the Prusa Mark III, and this is how it turned out, and it's gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. This is Strong Hero 3D, and this is their Splendid Filament. This is printed on the CME CNC Artemis, and the Artemis does a great job. I didn't get the settings right. You can see it's stringy like crazy, but I think the model looks good other than the strings, and I would consider this a stringy success. This is Matter Hacker's Build Series PLA. This is an old spool. This is a stringy spool from the Artemis again. I think I need to get my retraction settings and my temperature settings dialed in on the Artemis. I'm still playing with it, but other than the strings, I think it turned out good. And yellow, very yellow. Here's another Polyalchemy FX. This is a different color than the last one. This is on the Prusa Mark III. I love this. I love their filaments, and the Prusa does such a good job with them. Uh, I would consider this model a great success. I'm showing you both of these at the same time because they were printed at the same time on the Ultimaker 2 using Matter Hacker's Build Series PLA. I think they look good. For the most part, there are some issues from layering. Uh, it just, it, I think higher up, the Ultimaker didn't quite uh, get the layering correct. It looks good. They mesh together, but it's not the best model out of all of these. And this probably means I need to do some maintenance on my Ultimaker 2 Plus. This is Protopasta HTPLA. This was a transition roll from when I went down and made some filaments some one time. You can tell it's a little bit lighter at the top and it goes down to this deeper color in the bottom. I printed this at 240C on the Prusa i3 Mark III. And other than a few little strings, it's glorious. I love the color and the Prusa did a fantastic job with it. This is almost a, a teal or mermaid or something like that. This is Protopasta HTPLA on the Prusa i3 Mark III printed at 240C. And I think it turned out great. The sparkles in the filament look wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. There we go. We've got all of these now with bearings and they just need to be placed on the pad. This is the first time I've done this. Here we go. Okay, here we go. We've got them all. Okay, I'm gonna try turning. <laughs> I can't believe this is working. This is just stupid cool. I love this. Talk about a desk toy. You know, you could attach a motor to one side and just have it continually go. There you go. Look at that. I think this is good. I think this is a great result. I'm really happy with the way this turned out. It's amazing that, that these all work and they all turn with such ease. Great design on this. I know some people have said that you may need to put spacers under the bearings just so they spin easier, but they spin just fine. And what was great is the Color Fab, the Nylon G, the Polyalchemy FX, and the Filamentum filaments for the base all meshed together just fine. And for the ones that didn't, I was able to take this burr removal tool and make them all fit. It's not always sunshine, rainbows, and unicorn farts. Sometimes prints fail. And in the case of this, a lot of prints failed. This isn't the easiest thing to print because as it prints this helical structure, it has to have the nozzle hop around to each of these little threads as they go up. And it's just over and over and over. So it's a massive amount of retractions. It is a long time to print. Uh, so let's take a look at some of my failures. <laughs> Before we get into the failures, let me tell you about this video's sponsor, Squarespace. 
Squarespace is an all-in-one website building solution, and it allows you to create an online home for your business or your side hustle or both. Squarespace offers templates that make creating your online identity really easy. And these templates aren't there to be cookie cutters. They're there to give you a starting point, which should give you all sorts of leverage to create something awesome for your goal. Are you ready to join the Squarespace family and bring your imagination to reality? That's great. Head over to squarespace.com forward slash 3D printing nerd to get 10% off your first purchase. When we talk about failures in 3D printing, we don't talk about if something is gonna fail, we talk about the inevitable failure that will always happen. If you are 3D printing anything, there will be failures, 100% guaranteed. You can't let those get you down though because you need to use your failures as a way to learn what happened, learn what went wrong, learn what's not working right, and then adapt and change and make again using the information that you gleaned from the failures. So let's take a look at the failures, shall we? First is this bit. This is, oh, this is atomic glow-in-the-dark filament. It's actually wonderful filament. I had this printing on the Pulse XE, but uh, I had problems with the Bontech push fit for the Bowden tube, and uh, I had replaced it with some cap tubes. The outer diameter is a little bit less than normal. It popped out of the Bontech, and uh, well, these, these failed. They still glow in the dark, they still spin, but they are failures. I also experienced some failures with the CME CNC Artemis. Uh, the Artemis is an interesting machine because it is a Bowden machine. Retractions and retraction speed are very, well, they're delicate because you end up, you're, you're pushing 1.75 millimeter filament through what turns out to be quite a long Bowden tube. And so just the back and forth, the pressures, if it's too much, it can cause jams and uh, I was always worried, so I let things print, but uh, I woke up to this. Look at that. That is wonderful. I couldn't do that if I tried. It's almost like bubbly. So I was I was having to turn up the temperature a bit, uh, which meant strings, lots and lots of strings. You can kind of tell right there that uh, stringiness, it was happening. It was happening. Uh, and also, because I, uh, I, I didn't want to print so hot, so I would turn the temperature down, it would start clicking because it couldn't force the filament through. I ended up changing the profile from 100% flow rate to 95% flow rate, and that's how I got the successes I had over here. But man, look at that. That, it just, it just breaks right off. And this one is, it's like bubbles. See, this one's mostly strong. Oh, no, it's not. I did try using Matter Hacker's Build Series PLA on the Ultimaker 3. Normally it would work fine, but the Ultimaker 3 spool storage on the back, I think is probably one of the worst filament uh, spool holding solutions that uh, a high-end 3D printer can have. Uh, I know it worked on the Ultimaker 2 Plus, but the Ultimaker 3 continued it with the dual extruder and they had to stack filaments in the back and not all filament spools are the same width and not all filament spools work well back there. So the, the Matter Hackers Build Series PLA would get caught up and that's what happened here. These are the non-helical or the non-cagey looking ones. And so what I did is I, I printed out a base and the base worked and then it got to be so high and then it, the spool jammed. The print didn't jam, the spool itself jammed. It couldn't turn on the spool holder anymore, which meant that it was just grinding away at the filament. And that's how we, we ended up with these. I mean, it's great. I could put bearings in the bottom of this and it could, it could still spin. There we go. I mean, it's never coming apart ever again, but that doesn't matter. So we kind of, we kind of fixed it. Uh, next, I was trying to use Filamentum CPE on the Ultimaker 2 Plus, and I just couldn't get it. Oh, man, I don't know what was going wrong, and I'm sure there's some settings, but the, the nozzle would just jam up. I, I printed with a brim, brims and PEI and that material, they, they work really well. They just come right off, uh, but it just, it would jam a little bit and I don't know what was going on. So if you have any tips for printing Filamentum CPE on the Ultimaker 2 Plus, please let me know. Finally, 
<laughs> Look at this. I was trying to print these on the Yan from Furling Tech. You know, the thing that looks like the Obsidian, that looks like Polaroid, that looks like the Wanhao, that, you know, that printer, right? I tried printing on there and, uh, well, if you look, look, so it's super thin, let's see, super thin, it just bends. This one, I did a whole bunch more perimeters. Uh, the space between the raft isn't good and it's, it's almost like a, it's like a sponge cake. I don't think I'm extruding enough filament. Uh, I think that I either need to slow the speed down or increase the multiplier. The default Cura profile that they gave me has 102% flow rate. Should work, but it didn't. Sad. Well, with that, why don't we call it good? We have a functional model here. 13 of these things all spinning. I absolutely love it. Thanks for coming by. Thanks for watching. Thanks for your support. Don't forget to hug each other more. I love you guys. As always, high five.